Hello, my name is Nathan Fields. Welcome to my first edition of my video blog on etymology. And uh, I decided just to start in the middle instead of uh, coming at it from some beginning point. And um, first of all, I'd like to look at two Czech words. Um, and those words are, if you look down at my paper, those words are Kotva and Kotnik. Now, nobody would really put these words uh, together in their minds or think that there was really anything uh, similar about them. Uh, one of them means anchor and the other means ankle. Uh, so, one thing that we can see immediately about these words is that they have the same beginning. Kot, Kot, but what really caught my attention was the fact that the beginnings in English are also the same. Uh, a and K, not too different from A and C H, you have the same sound, ank and ank. What is the probability that two seemingly unrelated words, ankle and anchor, would start with exactly the same sounds in English? So I started to think a little bit more about it. Um, well, let's think about it. What is an anchor? It's uh, basically something that looks like a piece of metal bent into this position, right? And if we think about the ankle uh, and we draw a similar picture, it's a point at which the foot bends, yes? Um, ank and ank and caught and caught. So, okay. This uh, this similarity seemed definitely intriguing to me in my mind, but I didn't want to be one to jump to conclusions. So, can we think of any other words that fit into this group? Um, in Czech, I cannot readily come up with more words that begin with kot that would uh, fit into my idea of the plan. Well, that's not true. There is one more word. And um, I can write that down for you, and that is kotrmelets, which is a somersault. Um, but I don't really want to include that right now because I have a feeling that while these roots, uh, that these are truly the roots of the word, I have a feeling that in Czech this is a preposition and that the root lies somewhere in here. So this one might actually be a coincidence. So what other words uh, could we possibly come up with that uh, seem similar to ankle and anchor? By the way, uh, what we're going on here is the similar idea of a bend, right? So an anchor as a bent piece of metal uh, to stop your ship and the the ankle got lost right here, um, but the ankle, the bend that uh, is a major bend in your leg. Um, so I guess the most obvious word to go to from here would be angle. Um, and that's actually a key, right? Because an angle ends up looking almost exactly like our picture, my primitive picture of an ankle. And I think we can even say that uh, angle actually means bend exactly, right? So can we bring it further? I mean, can we get any more evidence? Ack, I'm missing an N here. Sorry about that. Ank, anchor, angle, right? So I don't know. Can we go way out on a limb here and think about uh, the modern capital of Turkey, Ankara? Now... I know, it seems to be kind of a leap, right? Um, well, it should, but it's a good way to test whether it works or not. So the first thing I was thinking about Ankara is that it could potentially be something not unlike the city of Anchorage, Alaska, which is literally a place where ships can use their anchors. Um, but then looking on the map, you find that um, it's not on the coast and uh, you might not have very many ships going through there. 
But if you look a little bit closer, you can see that there is a river running by Ankara. Um, and maybe there would be ships uh, with anchors at that point, which would, uh, you know, give them the opportunity to use the word Ankara or the root Ankh for the naming of the city. Look, I'm not an expert. I'm just an enthusiast about these words and about uh, where they came from and the crazy connections between the sound of Kot and uh, the sound of Ankh. Um, so, when you read about Ankara, what you find out is that the river, whether or not it had ships anchoring in that space, what you do find is that there's a bend at almost at the point of the city, in that river. And it's, uh, it's my feeling, as well, I've also read it from different resources, that it is guessed that this is actually the root of the word Ankara, um, bend in the river. And as we know, for example, in the USA, there are, there are towns that are already named for bends in the river. We've got Bend, Oregon, which... Um, yes, uh, is located on the bend of a river. You've got West Bend, Indiana, which is the same case. So there is a precedence for um, cities being named after bends in rivers. All right, so what do we got? We've got a sound, ANCH, which can be spelled A-N-C-H, A-N-C-K, A-N-G. Uh, and, um, but uh, it begs another question. Where did these words come from? Um, in one sense, uh, we're working with the English language. Uh, ankle, anchor, angle. And um, then we're in Turkey, I, I don't, the capital of Turkey. So how did you get um, a word using the root ank, Ankara, as in Turkey? And how did it get all the way to, let's say, England, where the English language was forming uh, and where they were even a thousand years ago using this sound ank to mean bend. Uh, and why were they using the same sound to mean bend also in Turkey? Okay, so if you know something about Proto-Indo-European languages, uh, we know that there's a common source for many of our languages, many of the vocabulary words that we have in our languages, that that's not just restricted to English. Um, Right, so it's not unthinkable that uh, word would have originated in the area of Turkey, uh, I don't know how long ago, and would have been passed along with the same meaning, keeping the same meaning um, geographically all the way to the island of Britain. Okay, where else can we go from here? Um, I would like to go even further away from Britain for a moment and look at this symbol. Um, which will be familiar to many of you as an Egyptian symbol. And it is called an Ankh, if I'm spelling it correctly. And I really tried very hard to find some connection to, uh, to the words that we've already got and to this Ankh. Um, you look at it, it is somehow bent, isn't it? And I wouldn't be surprised I wouldn't be surprised if uh, it was called the Bent Cross or some something like that. However, I have I have my serious doubts, and uh, as I'm not a scientist on etymology, as I said, I'm just an enthusiast. Um, I still have question marks for the word "ank." Nevertheless, uh, that's Egypt. To Turkey, we've got the Ankara, but. Okay, let's get a little bit closer to the island of Britain, and let's think for a bit about the German language, which I happen to know quite a bit of vocabulary in. Um, in. Okay, so. Um, you might be familiar with the word in German, which is... Uh, okay, let's move this up here a little bit. No, or down which is angst. Um, and this is going to connect us immediately with the uh, English words anger or 
angry. And uh, although not a direct translation, uh, angst is actually closer to the, in meaning to the word anxiety, right? Which again, these words have very, very similar, very similar uh, roots as the ones we were initially work, uh, working with anchor, angle, uh, and ankle. So now how do we uh, try to connect these words? I mean, you can have a bit of fun with them and think like, okay, if you get, uh, if you get bent out of shape, uh, you know, you might be feeling a little bit anxious or, or angry about something. Um, okay, that sort of makes sense. Uh, can imagine that. But um, I just wanted to have a little bit more factual or factual sounding uh, connections between the words so that it wouldn't just be, you know, something that I can imagine. Okay, so if you look more deeply into the German words angst, um, you have a word which is very similar, also in German, and I hope that I can write that correctly, but that word is, uh, uh, I, I don't know if it has an umlaut, actually, I could look that up, but the word ang, um, meaning, uh, now we get to this sort of important point in my thoughts, uh, about the evolution uh, of, of these words. Ang means in German, it means narrow, right? So I don't know how we can represent that. Um, what about something narrowing, right? So in this picture, we can see these two lines, and as you go in this direction, uh, it's becoming more narrow. It's becoming, in German, anger. Um, so, here's the idea. What is the connection between angst, anger, uh, ang, or more narrow, anger, um, and I can even more imagine that this feeling of narrowness, or this feeling of being closed, um, or that is, you know, being bent, being sort of bent towards each other uh, is very much connected with the idea of, of something which is narrow. So I think we can make a connection between bend uh, and narrow, and even to see how it lends itself to then sort of em emotional metaphors, um, that when you are feeling somehow narrow, uh, you can imagine like the feeling of claustrophobia, uh, even agoraphobia, being crowded, something like that, then it can produce, narrowness can produce anxiety. Narrowness can produce anger. Don't you think? Um, I do. Um, okay, so there, there are more examples um, that we could look at. So basically what I've seen, I've moved from Turkey, had a question mark about Egypt and the Ankh, um, we can see that in the German language, ang, angs, or ank, um, these sounds really can be exactly about bending. So the bending of the ankle, the bending of the metal, which makes an anchor, um, a bend, which is also an angle. Um, and then in German, not only the narrowing idea, the physical narrowing idea, but also an emotional narrowing idea. Um, by the way, if you if you want to think more about this idea of narrowing, uh, we can bring this a lot farther. For example, if you think about the word strangle, right? Um, not really sure how it was built, but there really does seem to be some narrowing happening, uh, as there would be if you strongly tried to narrow somebody's throat. That mm, sounds, you know, like you're like strangling. Anyway, let's jump to another point. Um, if we consider the geography of Germany, now I'm going to draw 
a horrible map of that country, um, as well as the uh, horribly inaccurate island of Britain, the bottom of it, uh, coming here. So, um, what we've got is this narrowing of the landmass. We've got ocean around here, and we've got this narrowing kind of landmass. And the people who eventually inhabited this area were called uh, were called Angles, and um, the Angles eventually were the people who got into their ships, and uh, let's uh, be sure that they had anchors with them, uh, and they sailed to an island and populated it. They weren't the first ones, but isn't it amazing that that island eventually became Angle land, land of the people who are inhabiting the narrows of this landmass called the Angles. And so the, uh, the whole language that we're talking about was carried, the meaning of it, uh, the language, the English language, the root of that actually comes from the meaning which is held contained in these other words, the meaning of bending, narrowing. So, strange connection between Ankara and England, uh, between the Tur Turkish language, the uh, English language, the German language, and it certainly doesn't stop there. Uh, through my searches through online and paper dictionaries, etymological dictionaries, Oxford English Dictionary, uh, they're not always sure either as to the true origins of these words, but with a little bit of common sense and a little bit of uh, experience with how words are put together, how they can work, uh, can find some pretty interesting stuff um, that, I mean, just to sum up the, the idea that the name for the language I'm speaking, English, comes from that root, ang, ing, uh, named after the people living in the Narrows, uh, the Narrow Dwellers, the Angles. Um, and in the meaning of their name is the idea of narrow, which is also metaphorically used in emotional descriptions of feelings of narrowness, anxiety, uh, anger. Um, and uh, so... That's what the thinking about those two words, um, Kotnik and Kotva, led me to. Um, that's what I've been thinking. Thank you.